So what's better than an LS3? Is two LS3s. Just check out these puppies. So our diary is now solid for this year. Fresh American muscle. It all started working on a series in my dad's shed. I followed my dreams and joined the Marines, serving in Afghanistan. Defenders were always part of me. So here we are, building custom machines with my awesome team in Shropshire. We are Maker. Hi guys, welcome to our channel. I'm Dave and this is episode 12. So last week, guys, we met our target of a thousand subscribers. Really chuffed that, guys. So keep sharing, keep subscribing, and make sure you tell all your friends because we really want to make the best out of this channel. This is Wombat. So Wombat last week, on the last episode, you'll see we built the chassis in a day with the running gear. And the following week, we landed on this beautiful blue body. The guys on the estate here, Creed and Shaw, painted it for us. Made a beautiful job, as you can see. This week has consisted of full sound deadening of the body. So we've gone full dynamatic extreme in the front. We've gone dodo matting on the roof. Basically, we want this car to be quiet on the inside and loud on the outside. So guys, those of you that follow us on Instagram will see that we had a bit of a wet weekend down in Devon. So we took um, a good friend of mine, Nathan's 4x4 car down there, and he's got the latest Hornet 2 from Red Winches. We decided to get the car right in the bottom of the valley. It was a punch hunt. I think we were about number nine in, and we had the car upside down on more than probably two occasions. So if you just check out for the next slide, you'll see why we got to. But we had a few problems with the engine. The engine decided to throw its top end, so that was us. And uh, it's put it on the trailer and cut it, cut it short, basically, which is a bit of a shame. But check out the, the results on there. I believe they had a really good weekend and it just got very, very wet. This project here belongs to our good friends at Kingsman. Um, Tom and his team approached me to restore their American export cars. So this vehicle was brought to me in a very sorry state. It was very rusty, very corroded. We've had to put a bulkhead in this. We've had to replace the tub. We've had to replace the cappings. The B posts had totally deteriorated, so we scrapped them, started again. We want this build to be immaculate, so totally flawless because this car is going to have um, a Monair hood, so full cage, soft top, back, full doors, so some niceties in there, so you can do long distance in there, in where it's destined to in America, so it'd be pleasurable to use on the highway, if you like. This chassis has been into our blast booth, which is um, in our other building. This was fully blasted, top to bottom. We've replaced the rear cross member, that was totally corroded. We've replaced, I think we've replaced two of the three of the outriggers because they were totally shot. The most important thing about these American projects is we keep the VIN number. So the VIN number is super important because you cannot get these cars into America without it. So you have to use everything original. So and while we're at it, we like to give these cars nice little upgrades. So you'll see these Alice Sport silicon hoses, Alice Sport radiator kits that we use, and Andrew Gray makes these beautiful aluminium surrounds. So we've gone a taller fifth gear in this gearbox to basically allow this car to cruise better. You know, in America, the highways are longer. So we wanted a little bit of ratio. So the ratio allows you to cruise at a higher speed at a lesser RPM. And as you'll see here, we've replaced fuel lines throughout, brand new brake lines throughout. There's nothing that hasn't been untouched. It's a stainless steel exhaust system. We've kept some silences in there. We want it to have a nice exhaust note, but we also want it to be acceptable. At, so when you're cruising at say 70, 80 mile an hour, she's gonna be happy on the highway. So here are 
Cerberus's summer tyres. So Will wanted some tyres that were not so aggressive as the KM3 MUDs, so we gave him the all-terrain. So we wrapped these beautiful 17-inch methods in the BF Goodrich Badger Champions, just to give him that extra bit of grip. How beautiful have these turned out? We had them powder coated last week. At our friends at Rose Hill. So we're going with a satin bead. I think this is called soft bronze. So last week we were busy on Cerberus installing these beautiful drawers. Unfortunately, I can't show you it with the gun installed, but I'm sure you guys can imagine. This is where the goods is going to be stored. We've got a beautiful cleaning kit here. We love working with Kingsman. The quality of their products is just second to none. And the prize in this drawer system is this automated one, which we just love. Just check out these glasses. And we're pretty much stocked up on every tipple that you can ever imagine. Totally automated off this little remote control. How cool is that, guys? So a customer of ours from London, Arnie, approached us for the ultimate sound system in this 90. So this is what we gave him. We gave him these two 12-inch monstrous subs. We made him this enclosure, which my dad made from scratch, which I'm really proud about. And we gave him these beautiful quilted bench seats. The leather trimmer's made an ace job of that enclosure. Fair dues. So guys, we've now made this corner in the workshop. This is going to be our dedicated fabrication corner. So this is where the exhaust get made, this is where the aluminium radiators are going to get welded together and it's basically we want to keep aluminium and stainless steel separate but we also want to keep this area clean so this is where no mild steel comes in this corner. So as you can see we've got a range of pipes, stainless steel cabinets will come in handy. We actually take these from my dad's um, old cafe that um, shut down a few years ago, the Raven Cafe. So thanks to my dad and Lynn for those, kindly donated. So and we're getting there. So that's why this building here now, currently having the exhaust fabricated from scratch. So the Dirty 130 has had some interior upgrades. Um, we've had our trim guy really busy in here, so we've gone with these beautiful Recaro seats. We've gone with a lovely hex stitch cubby box. And as you see down here, we've literally lined the whole thing out with brand new carpets, but underneath the carpets, we've gone the full whole hog. Dynamatting, dodo matting, new wheel, a Momo Pro Tipo. This is our, one of our favorite wheels. It's simple, it's effective, and it just, it feels nice in your hands. And I struggle because I've got big elbows and big guy. And fitting in these little defenders, as you know, isn't really for me, <laughs> but we make it happen. But yeah, I'm really chuffed with it. So we've gone with a nice stainless steel door thresh. Just trying to make these cars a little bit more hard wearing and just trying to make them last a little bit more. So for those of you that followed from a few episodes earlier, we've got this massive, this is a Mog Doka. So this Unimog was brought to us in a very sorry state of repair. Axles were sharp, chassis was sharp, body's pretty much sharp, but we're going to keep some of this patina and basically repair it. So we've given this engine the treatment. So it's basically had upgraded valve springs, little bits and bobs, upgraded fuel pump. We've gone with a big three inch inlet in stainless steel. We've given this a HX35W turbo. We basically want this thing to have a lot of get up and go. We don't want it to be laggy. We don't want it to have massive power, but we also want it to be reliable. And this thing is gonna be, it's gonna be more of a show truck, you know, taking the clients, bits and bobs to shows, and basically demonstrating what he can do as a business, as well as what we can do really. And we're pretty proud of how far we've got. And as you can see, it's just an absolute beast. So we've sat it on 40 inch Trepador tires. We made some custom 17 inch steel wheels and she just looks the part. So we actually can't wait to get this thing thumping down the road. because It's just gonna look awesome. So guys, it's new tool day for us. Um, we bought this machine for bending this schedule aluminium heavy wall pipe. 
basically we contacted a mob here actually tom the salesman and he recommended that this machine would suit us down to the ground we've also bought that two inch tool there because we need to do a roll cage for the rat rod and we also want to do some funky a-frames for the bumper kit as you can see here everything's just huge about this piece of kit and it's what we love it's going to be built to last so here goes we're going to have a little bit of a play here so just seeing the capabilities of this machine more than anything is what we can actually do with it it's amazing what you can do with a piece of tube basically so this machine here, we used it to make the roof rack on the Mercedes Overland van, and we also made the spare wheel carrier. It allows us to make light components, like this is aluminum tube. It weighs absolutely nothing when it compared to steel of its similar like variant in strength. So if there's anything you need making in two inch or 38 mil, get in touch and we can bend it up whenever you fancy. Okay. So there's a, a great delivery of lovely products this week. So we've had these Fox arrive from the USA. These are, are totally adjustable so if you're not quite happy with how your car's riding or how your car's behaving on the road you can actually turn your rebound up and down so you can go softer or harder depending on what you fancy doing with the car we've also came up with this beautiful battery tray idea we've always struggled with compacting odyssey batteries into defender seat boxes just because seat boxes are brittle they're soft aluminium and we needed something strong and safe so we came up with this idea so we can bolt it in at the base and basically allow this to clamp the battery in so it's safe and secure, so it keeps your power systems bolted tight. So this guy's landed from America. This is probably the world's strongest transfer case. It's a three-speed hero made by Trailworthy. This here is gonna go in my own project. So I've got a Russian Zill cab that I basically wanna build the ultimate, say Ultra 4 toy. So this here is designed to go in the center of the car because I'm gonna go rear engine. So this is gonna reverse rotation because I'm gonna flip the diffs. So this is basically gonna drive into a four wheel drive. So it's gonna to go to the back and to the front via these massive yokes. Round here, we've got an LT4 going into a 90. So a customer approached us and wanted the ultimate 90. So we said the Corvette LT4 fuel injected, supercharged out the box. This is an absolute torque monster. So it's gonna be fun to drive, especially round here because we've got a Tremec six speed. And Dean's here trying to make the shifters possible. We basically got to make the shifters work in this tight place. It's going to be fun, isn't it, Dean? Yeah, so basically what I'm doing here is adapting the factory, um, well, this, this billet machined um, Tremec adapter. Um, and I'm just going to basically make that so we can select the high and low ratio and diff lock um, with this six speed box. We love a challenge, but this is going to be a tight challenge, if you like. So the customer wanted the Puma Dash. So it's going to be compact. And as you can see down here, the headers, everything's getting closer. As, as we add things to this build, everything's just getting more and more and more compact. So this is a prime example of the poor repairs that we see. I think that's the case of like the guy's been sat in the pub and said, oh, well, I can weld, mate. I'll come around yours and weld. Trust me, guys, don't let them guys weld your car because it's just shocking. Like, I think Fred in his shed, who thinks he can weld, look, look at the state of this. I think it's another word for pigeon, um, you know what? So we're gonna basically cut all these off at source and we're gonna replace these with brand new items to make this car safe, strong, and basic USA proof. So this is going to be number two for Kingsman. So this chassis is going to be like the one I showed you earlier, if not better. We always try and improve on every single chassis that we do. So unfortunately, we can't replace these chassis. As much as I disagree with the USA system, I think, why can't we send a brand new galvanized chassis? Because in fact, it's safer rather than cutting, welding, replacing. But hey ho, we've got to follow the laws and we've got to keep everyone happy. So what you see here, give us a couple of weeks and we'll have this looking like new. It's like in here. Like in here, I think people should really leave the welding to the professionals. So we're going to put a new cross member on the back. You can see here, I call it rust burst. So basically the moisture just got in there and it caused the materials to burst. So we're going to tuck the whole end off. I'm going to, we're going to take it off to about here. So what we do, we sleeve the inside of the chassis to make it strong. So basically copy how the original people did it. 
but try and replace it and make it stronger. So these chassis have to be 100% authentic. So basically, as you can see here, here is the VIN number. So this would have been stamped in, I want to say, I think this is 1989, this chassis. So this would have been stamped in by a chap with a punch in the Land Rover machine shop. And as you can see here, some, someone has welded a patch of here. I'd imagine there'd have been a bit of corrosion behind it at some point. And that's not a weld to be proud of, unfortunately. But I can imagine it's been, oh, just chuck a weld on here, mate, just to get it for the next MOT. So we're going to take all this off, we're going to cut all this out, and we're going to prepare it and replace it properly. So guys, this car we converted earlier last year. This car belongs to a customer of ours from up north. We converted this to a 330D. This car is pushing out probably, I want to say, 650 newton meters. It sure does shift. This has got an M57 330D with a six-speed manual. So she sure does get the power down well. We ask the customers to bring our cars back after the conversion, say 1,500 miles, just so we can nut and bolt and check everything. This car had a brand new chassis, so we've had everything to bits. And it's something that we offer free of charge. It comes back, we check every single nut and bolt, we check the electrical system, we check the fuel system, we check the wheels, we check the brakes. Because as you know, something comes to bits, bolts do settle, things do slacken off, so we just want to make sure they're 100% safe. So this 3.9 litre Rover V8 90 rag top is for sale. If you're interested, it's a left hooker. You're beautiful in France, Spain, or properly Ivy, so that's where I'm going to take it. Get in touch. So guys, Project Pig just passed its MOT. It's going home on Saturday back to its customer in a very different way it arrived here. So this car arrived to us as a 2.5 naturally aspirated military scruffy old Defender basically. So what we've given it under here is the full treatment. So this is our 350 horsepower spec BMW. 330D, we've given it hybrid turbo, we've given it oversized nozzles, we've given it our massive 330D cooling kit. The intercooler is the biggest kit that we can physically fit in the front of here. So you can see the pipe work, everything is tailor made to suit the BMW. We've given it some nice upgrades, so Ali Sport header tank with a nice little sight glass. Martin really wanted that, so we gave him exactly what he wanted. Some nice little subtle upgrades, you know, like bonnet prop, stainless covers, all the nice little bits. This car had a brand new galvanized bulkhead. His old one was totally shot, so perished along the edges and just way beyond repair. The chassis, as you'll see in the next slides, has been totally stripped back to bare. We gave it the full treatment with the Leclerc coatings. So you'll see around here now. So two stage Leclerc coating. So we primed the chassis. And if you can see under here, she's like brand new. We gave it our latest galvanized maker steering guard. So we're mixing like galvanized with nice black painted bits. There's some also, there's some zinc coated items. We gave it Bilstein shocks. We gave it our sports suspension. These beautiful banded stip wheels. We've given a few cars these now. You'll you remember Legacy, Ethos. So we gave a few of the cars these beautiful nine inch wide banded steel wheels. We're gonna carry these in stock shortly. So if you want a set, don't be afraid to get in touch. Beautiful stainless steel nuts we don't want anything to go crusty or shitty on this car so we got it perfect the bumperettes here back in the day in the military these were here so when the car behind is in convoy the military lads are known for shunting each other up the back end so they put these here to basically prevent writing the back end of the car off so give you a second chance of life so down here we gave the car a three inch roll tip system this system is made in 304 stainless steel all the way to the back of the turbo. We don't want any restrictions on the system. So we just went all out, straight through, and boy, has it got an amazing exhaust though. So while we were here, we redid the chassis, we redid the bulkhead. 
I said to Martin, I said, do you want to go for some upgrades? So we gave this car a stereo system, as you can see here, Mud UK sorted us out with this lovely surround. And for the Puma guys out there, you'll recognize these sticks. This gearbox is an MT82. So we gave it a six speed gearbox as well. So this is a manual six speed mated to our 330D adapter. As you can see there, that's a custom tunnel. We gave him some local speakers, just basically giving him some nice creature comforts. Thanks for watching. Next week, we're thinking about having a question and an answer. So basically anything you really want to know about the workshop, how we do things, why we do things, and more so, we just want to know some feedback really. So drop a comment below, let us know exactly what you want to know about our business and why we do what we do. Thanks again, guys. Whee! Hey, hey, hey. Get the handbrake on. <laughs> That'd be me.